Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to WoW Live! My name is Tusky and in this new video series we are going to be doing something very nice and very simple. It's just this. We're going to go on to a level 1 monk and level him up to 100. No boosted 90, no heirlooms, none of that bollocks. We're just going to do it nice and slow at the rate at which most players are going to level up. Now this isn't going to be a let's play, it's not going to be one of those videos where it's like I'm just going to talk about random things as I go along. I might do that, but hopefully they will be pertinent to the actual leveling process and World of Warcraft. But mostly this is going to be a very long guide. Let's look at it like this. So I get a lot of questions every now and then. A, little, a lot of questions, basically, about leveling up. And I know a lot of people, sometimes they struggle, sometimes they don't. And a lot of people use heirlooms. And it's the whole process is a little bit muddied, at least in my opinion. And I'd like to share some kind of tips and tricks that I've found over my many years of World of Warcraft with you guys. Now this video series is going to be edited, much more so than my last WoW Live series, if you were around when you watched that with the boosted level 90 druid, who is actually right over here. Here he is. But yeah, if you ever did that then, and you watched that, thank you very much for watching that, and hopefully this will be somewhat similar, but it will not have as much downtime. I'm going to do a lot of editing out boring parts where I'm not talking or not too much is going on, and it's just going to be more about a guide, and it's just going to be me spouting out ideas and stuff as I go along. So, the first thing we're going to want to do, I actually made this character a long time ago. Uh, I think before I even, uh, Warlords of Adrenal launched, I think I made all these different characters. So I have a level 55 Death Knight, a level 1 Priest, level 1 Hunter, level 1 Warlock, and a level 1 Monk. They are all trolls, because trolls is, troll is the best race. And then I have my Shaman, Mage... A paladin, the druid that I showed you earlier, and a warrior that I have not leveled up. I do have some other leveling to do, but I probably won't make wild lives of them, because why would I when I'm just going to do it with this? So that's what we're going to do. But before we start, we are going to want to go into the add-on list, go to Suiji, which is his name, and we're going to disable everything. No, that's enable everything. We're going to disable everything. I don't know why it has decided to keep these on, but we'll have to disable them manually. But yeah, uh, I think it's very important that we level. I'm going to say we a lot. Really, it's just me leveling. You're not helping right now, but you're just listening, so, but that helps. When I level up, I like to not use a custom UI at the start. I like to just get a feel for the class before I start changing things with a user interface and lots of different add-ons. And, I mean, if you're a new player as well, and this is the kind of thing that, you know, you do quite often, you re-roll a lot, that's what I do. I know I reroll a lot, then what you really want to do is you want to just avoid any kind of big UI like this. Just level with the default UI, get used to the classes, get used to how you move around, get used to just the game really before you start enhancing it with different add-ons. Because that's what add-ons do, they just give you information, they enhance it and you don't want to... I'm just going to log in. You don't want to end up being overwhelmed with information that you don't understand. I'm going to cancel the cinematic. This is not about lore, all of this. It's not going to be about the lore and the story. Although, I will definitely enjoy it as I go along and I do it. I'm just going to sort out my UI a little bit here. It's going to be much more about actually uh, leveling up in the process as we go through and the combat that we do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my chat log bigger because I like big chat logs. I'm going to activate my different uh, bars here. Although, they seem to be all lacking keybinds, but that's okay. We'll go here and we'll go to character-specific keybinds. We definitely want this, otherwise we'll screw over the other... Uh, characters which we don't want to do. I admit I haven't used this before so I, it should be this. Here we go, okay. So here are the keybinds that I use. I use Q, E, T, G, Shift Q, Shift D, Shift T, Shift G, Control Q, Control E, Control D, Control G. And then I have Shift 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Here on the bottom right I have J and Shift J for my mount. I have middle mouse button, Shift middle mouse button, and Control middle mouse button. Although normally I have them one more up like that. And then on the right, we start down here at the bottom, we have F, uh, we'll start with Shift 1, Shift 2, Shift F2, Shift F2, Shift 3, Shift 4, Shift 5. We're not going to use all of these, we'll uh, start moving them out as we go along and level up, because I know that we won't be using too many of these. So, there we go, we have our key binding sorted out, we'll move our haste, our berserking to Shift Middle Mouse, which is what I'm used to. And we'll do that, and before we start our story, we will go, I don't want to broadcast, I want to go busy. So hopefully people will, will leave us alone. So. We're just going to start and get started as people talk. I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. I like having the dialogue a bit louder, but that's fine. So one of the things that a lot of people talk to me about when it comes to leveling is uh, speed. And I know a lot of people want to get this done really fast, as fast as they can. I'm just going to actually move my frame as I get stuck on a cactus. 
Uh, we will move this frame, unlock it, move these down here. And da -da 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 -da, that should be all good. We will lock position, lock position. There we go. Now, one thing to definitely do if you're just leveling up an alt is, of course, don't read quest text. You don't really want to read quest text. So I'm just going to go around and, and hit things here. I don't know too much about the monk. I know a little bit. I didn't actually kill that tiki target. I know that they use energy and chi, but that's about it. So that thing actually regenerated on me, the little bugger. But yeah, uh, at this point, mostly what you're doing right now is you're learning about the class and you're, you're, you're figuring out how it plays. And you very slowly learn that over the course of your leveling process, but eventually you'll figure out whether or not you like it. Uh, I know that I like the monk because I did actually, I believe I leveled up a monk to level 90 a long time ago. But yeah, uh, as I was saying, you don't want to read quest text. As you see, I'm not doing that. I just know the quest because you can read it up here and say wild main cat pelts. You get a little uh, kind of border around here showing you where they are. And as, especially if you find them, you mouse over them. There we go. In the bottom right, it shows you you need to kill these buggers. So that's just fine. Right now, we're just going to use our abilities to kill these guys. One more thing I need to turn on is auto loot. Now, we're not going to be... I've decided as well that I'm not going to be uh, kind of boosting myself with things like bags and gold for my other characters because A, I have no bloody gold, and B, I want to treat this as if I were like my first time ever leveling up and I was just, just happily doing it. Although I will say this, as I said, if you've done this before, you've done all these quests before, then it's very important that you... Uh, you can read the quest text if you want, but if you want speed, then it's a good idea not to. If you want immersion, then you're going to want to do that. Uh, another good idea as you're running back is to just kill some things. Just hit them a couple times. Hit it. I'm used to looting everything. You don't have to loot this because it is just a whole bunch of bollocks that you don't really need. It's just to teach you that, you know, loot exists. Right click on corpses to get loot. But, I mean, that's not too big a deal. I seem to be doing a lot of burst damage here, which is, uh, I'm, I think I'm just critting. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I have my floating combat text on. I do. I'll turn on my effects. And it should be all fine. I don't have floating combat text on me because I don't need to know what's hitting me. I just know that I just have my health visible here, so that's all good. The proving pit will go down here. Talk to the jailer, start all this. Now, as I said, when it comes to reading quest text, I would definitely suggest you do this if it's your first time playing through a particular zone. Definitely take your time and enjoy the story. But if it's not your first time, if you're just happily going around and leveling up an alt, then not reading quest text is important for, you know, actually going at a decent speed. So what have we got now? We've got Tiger Palm. Attacks uh, cause you to ignore 30% of uh, armor. All right, so this costs a Chi. So we have Chi on us right now, so we'll just do that. Very nice. So that's our little finisher. So we'll just keep that on two for now. So now we're going to go talk to Vol'jin. This is another part of the storyline that's going to be quite big if uh, you've never done it before. I'm going to be completely avoiding it just to speed through the process. It is very important that you consider whether or not you want to do this. And you really should think, okay, as I just equip my stuff, do I want to start and go slow and enjoy myself? Or do I want to just power through it? And that is something you need to decide. And it's that's not just saying like, you know, uh, I don't need that. That's not saying, oh, you need to decide right at the start and then go through it one way or another. No, of course not. You just have to make a decision mostly for what you're doing right now. So this guy, so Vol'jin's got something to show us. It's uh, his conversation with Garrosh, I believe it is, anyway. Yeah, there's Garrosh. Yeah, there we go. So they're, they're having an argument. I won't spoil it if you want to see it yourself, but that's not what this is about. It's not about spoiling things and seeing the lore. It's about leveling up, and it's important that you decide not on a session per session basis. So I'm not a case of a... Uh, okay, there's another troll here. He's called Zelazin. That's cool. Uh, but yes, you, you, you don't decide on a session-by-session session basis. Because if you go around and decide, oh, I'm going to do this today, you could very much find that, oh, I don't want to do this. And you could end up not enjoying it as a result. What you want to do is you want to think to yourself, okay, what can I do to make this enjoyable for me right now? And of course, my, my enjoyment of this is a little bit forced because I, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy it. I'm just saying that I have to talk constantly and that means I can't really get immersed in the world and of course there will be some points where I do get immersed in the world which is great and I love that those parts but of course I'm gonna be focusing much more on talking and making sure I keep a trail of thought and entertaining you as opposed to just being in silence and watching things it might happen might not but yeah this buff 
your attacks are north 30% armor. We are currently a wind walker at the moment. And we actually gained wind walking, which is a movement speed increase. So that's very nice. Can I actually get rid of this? No, I can't. But yeah, make sure you're always asking yourself, what can I do to enjoy this more? Can I speed up? Can I multipole? Can I go and do some instances? Maybe a bit of PvP? Am I going to just relax and enjoy the story for a while? And hopefully as we go through this, we'll do a little bit of all of that so that we can showcase different ways to level up. Because leveling up is not just all a big grind. Like, I'm kind of making it seem right now. It's not always a big grind. It's more about just the fact that, you know, you have to enjoy yourself. That's what it's about. I mean, so many people say that the game only starts at level 100 once you reach max level. But that is just not correct. Because they... Blizzard had themselves have stated that this is not correct by revamping the old world for Cataclysm. They're creating this really interesting story and making the place... Uh, making the whole world awesome. And that's really what it's about. So it's all about making sure you enjoy yourself. So Zood is going to be catching up with this now. And uh, as we as we continue here, I just want to point out a uh, an interesting technique for leveling up. Now, we will be leveling up mostly through quests. That's where we're going to get the bulk of our experience. But it's also important to note that we, uh, we get experience from killing things. And we're actually quite close to digging here. So for instance, if I were to kill one of these Blood Talon Raptors here, which is a terrible thing because these actually belong to the trolls, but, you know, that's just law. As you see, that actually dinged me. And, of course, it won't always be the case. That, of course, always won't be the case. But it's just that little bit of extra experience that helped us just level up a little bit. And it's really important that you figure out different ways to increase your experience. A lot of the time, it can be a really annoying when, for instance, something aggro's on you. And that's not going to be so much the case here. But it can much more be the case when you're trying to go through a higher level zone. And you, like, get dismounted because you're dazed or something. And you're, like, trying to like just make things leave you alone a lot of the times it can be worth it to just kill them and you actually get experience for doing so i mean of course that's not so much a case at maximum level unless they give something else like good loot or reputation or something like that but yeah it's definitely worth it to consider just killing things as you uh, as you wander around so that's what we're gonna do here what we're gonna do right now actually is we're gonna gather up a few of these guys because we're really not in any kind of danger right now we're just gonna gather up a few of these and this is a, an interesting technique that you can do especially at low levels like this because you're a uh, you, we can easily take all these guys on, so we'll just melee this guy. Okay, we actually evade bug one, though, so we might have overpulled a little bit. But as you can see, I'm not taking really any damage right now. And despite the fact that I have a five stack of a debuff... Oh, no, I have... All of my stats are reduced by five. That might seem like a lot at low level, but really, it's not stopping us from two-shotting these guys. And like I said, I'm not in any kind of heirloom gear at all. So it's important to note that. And as you can see, uh, we're powering through quite quickly here because we know the quests... And uh, if you don't know the quest, it can be a good idea to just spend a moment to just read through them. Make sure you catch everything. Like, if it says, like, oh, you need to do this, then, you know, make sure you do that. So, we're just going to go and kill this boss here. Nice little note, if you, if you didn't know this. We'll just pause for a moment. These little hatchlings, they should do it. Oh, they're not doing it. Okay, there we go. Oh, well. Well, a bit of a downside because we hit so hard. But they would actually jump onto uh, Naj Tess, his name is. They actually jump onto him and uh, start doing damage to him. They take revenge, so to speak. So as we go through here, we are just going to aggro this last guy and hit him a couple times. Really, is that simple. And although we are slowing ourselves down a little bit by, uh, by grabbing loot, we are also at the same time getting experience. And it's, it's not necessary to get this loot. I mean, it, like I said, this loot is... It's nothing. It's one copper, one copper, uh, 15 copper. That one's okay. Especially at low levels, but you know, none of it is a big deal. We can just, we can literally, literally do this and just kill things as we just run towards the quest givers. I don't want to kill these two Blood Talon Raptors though, because that just feels really, really kind of dicky of me. So I'm not going to do that. So we will hand in this, hand in this. Again, not reading the quest text. Finding Swift Claw, who I think he spawns over here. There he is, yeah. He just spawns like that. Because he's. It, it's important to know how the game works. As you can see, you see all these NPCs around here. These uh, This raptor over here that I'm just running past. I've, I've got it targeted. It's yellow. It's got a yellow name. Right? You see it down there. Yellow name. If I target Swift Claw down here, you notice if I just scroll in, he has a blue name. That means he is a player-created NPC. He is designed to be something that only you can see. Generally, that's what the case is. Which means that... Uh, those things generally tend to spawn in specific places for you. So it's it's important to note those kind of things. It, well, it, I wouldn't say important. It's more... It's very helpful to note those kind of things. So we will head over to here. I believe our next step is to uh, attack the Naga. So we're actually nearly off the starter aisle already. Uh, unfortunately, a big uh, block for, uh, for us is the fight with uh, Zajira, which actually takes quite a bit of time. So we will talk to you. 
and uh, and head over. Now, while we head over, I just want to pause for a moment and say that just because I'm rushing, it doesn't mean that I don't love the story of WoW. If you've seen any of my lore nerd videos, then you'll know I love the story of WoW. And I'm, the only reason I'm kind of rushing through this is because I've done it so many times, you know? I've done it over and over and over again. And I just know it inside and out. That really is the case. Knowing it inside and out is really important. Uh, if you want to level fast anyway. So if you want to level fast, then I would definitely suggest you go through zones that you're very familiar with. But if you want to enjoy yourself, go to the ones you're not familiar with. Explore. And yeah, the only reason that I'm going really fast right now. And unfortunately, it's probably going to be this case for most of the uh, leveling experience. I go so fast because I know all of WoW just about. The only kind of WoW that I don't know is the Alliance. And unfortunately, I just don't play Alliance. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But, yeah, I just don't play Alliance. So, that is the case with that. So, this uh, this quest really teaches you something about uh, about how quests work. And it, it's kind of subtle. It's something that most people probably won't notice as we uh, as we ding and gain. Oh, we gain roll. That's nice. So, that's, that's pretty cool. We'll just go through here. So, as I said, it's very important to note that as you quest throughout World of Warcraft, you want to... Uh, Make sure that you actually uh, do your quests in an organized fashion. So you don't want to be... I'm just going to move this over to my middle mouse button because that's what I use for my movement key. But yeah, uh, you, you want to go about it in an organized fashion. It's very easy to just, for instance, let's say with this uh, cave. It would be very easy to just go in here, kill the naga I needed, go out, hand that in, then come back into the cave and start... Uh, putting up all of the uh, these territorial fetishes which you don't want to do you want to do it all at once and here is actually a really good technique for uh, for handling things like caves and instances and things like that well not so much instances more kind of caves fortresses where there's only one way in and one way out and that is to basically go to the end of the cave which is right over here so let's say we've just gone to the end of this cave over here we've pretty much finished the quest at this point we're just going to do a little bit of a of multi-pulling here and just gonna beat these guys up and uh, the thing is now we are at the back of this cave and we only need one more territorial fetish to uh, to finish but we have to fight our way out of this cave now we forced ourselves to fight our way out of this cave which means we have to kill more naga which means we get more loot we get more gold as a result and we get most importantly more experience now this is the very important thing we get more experience and that is gonna help us level up faster one thing I always used to do before uh, Cataclysm came out and they uh, launched the new zones because unfortunately while WoW leveling back then wasn't as graceful as it is now. So uh, we're just going to head down here, kill this last one over here. Like we said, I don't have to do this, but it all stems from a technique I used to use. When uh, Trolls and uh, Orcs used to have the same starting zone in the Valley of Trials, this was in uh, Vanilla Burning Crusade and uh, Wrath of the Lich King. World of Warcraft, they would share the same same starting area. And what I would do is I would always make sure that I was level 6 before I left the starting zone. Now, normally the starting zone would finish at level 5, and you would go out into the world at level uh, 5. But by making sure I kill a few extra mobs here and there, by doing the things that I'm doing now, I'm, I get more experience. And that means that I am level 6 by the time I get out into the world. And that isn't so important anymore. It used to be. But... Right now, you don't have to do it. It's just a nice little technique that I used to use because if I'm level 6 by the time I hit the next uh, quest hub, which will be across the uh, the shoreline in, what you call it, uh, Senjin Village, then I will have a level advantage over everything else. Because right now, this is, as you can see, really, really easy. I'm basically two-shotting these guys, which is uh, great for us because that means that we can use our power advantage right now to build a power advantage later because if we out level just by one level the enemies that we're fighting uh, as we progress through Juratar then no problem yeah, things will be much easier because we don't have heirlooms to back us up we are doing this completely naked so to speak and honestly we could just do this naked because right now our armor is nothing it's this is only giving us one stamina it's just all kind of a bit pointless but it's just teaching you the main things about uh, questing and leveling up and uh, gearing so, right now, that's all fine. So, we're just going to roll up here, go past this. Now, one thing is, if you ever get stuck in combat like this, don't bother going through and killing them all. Mostly because these things, I don't think they actually give you experience because they're locked in combat with these other things. But mostly because by the time we get over here, we'll probably be out of combat fairly soon. So, 
we're just going to head over here. And while this uh, combat happens, I'm just going to kill these guys. Now, if Zajira aggroed onto me right now, she's got 1,500 health and is a level boss, which means she would one-shot me. She would literally one-shot me. So it was very important that I didn't get aggro on her there, but I knew she wasn't attackable because, first of all, I moused over her. And as you see when I moused over her, my mouse cursor does not turn into a... Uh, sword. If I target the spine lizard, you see it does. If I right click on him, I hit him and I, and I can kill him. Uh, but additionally, there you go. She just became attackable because you see I can now uh, m mouse over her and I get the sword. But her her nameplate has also appeared. This is why I suggest you turn on, on your nameplates. Now, I just want to be a bit careful about uh, grabbing aggro really early. Grabbing uh, by, by grabbing aggro, I mean... Uh, making her attack me rather than uh, Vol'jin, who has uh, 4 million health. So, I think it's okay that we uh, that we don't get aggro here. So, we're just going to kill this next spirit. We're going to stamp out these fires. Whoops. Stamp, stamp, stamp. There we go. Nice and simple. So, we're just going to continue to use our chi here. So, it looks like our rotation right now is uh, two jabs followed by four tiger palms. And uh, that... That, as you can see, it's working pretty well. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. Smack. Smack. We'll just kill this manifestation. And uh, unfortunately, one of my, my least favorite moments of World of Warcraft is about to happen. Even though she's about to die, she'll take Zuni with her, which is a terrible shame. Now, uh, I have actually... Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you an example here. Now we're going to half, because we are ready to turn in, and the turn in is at Vol'jin. Uh, down here in the other part of the Echo Isles. Now this little roleplay event happens over here, and uh, and and you know Vol'jin is like, I have a chance to avenge my father and all that stuff. And then Veneer, and then he'll run off, and then Veneer will say like, There's nothing I can do for Zuni. I'll take him back for uh, to to bury his corpse. And then she offers you a teleport back, which is quite a lengthy process. So you can hearth and just run back. I'm not entirely sure if it's faster. It may be because we have one wind walking and two roll. So that might work. But most importantly, we can just hit this dude. And then maybe this dude as well. And ding, level six. There we go. Because we have hit a few extra enemies, we have hit level six before we have even handed in the final quest for the starter zone. So nice and simple with that. As you can see, we're just happily killing things. And now we have that power advantage I mentioned. Because we're going to go out into uh, Juratar over here. We'll start Ascension Village and we'll be doing level five quests as a level six. And then we'll be doing level six quests as a level seven. Eventually it will even out, especially once we go into a new zone. But uh, we'll just go through here. Wow, I can't believe I finished 50 quests already. As you can see, it's going pretty fast, especially when you uh, you know what you're doing. So now we're just going to run back. Now, it, it could be argued that it might be a good idea to wait for uh, uh, Venera to teleport you out and then hearth from here to the, the shoreline. But that's not entirely necessary. I was just showing it as an example. Uh, you really want to look for moments where you can find that extra bit of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just find that extra bit of just time, you know? I'm, there is a better word for it. It's completely slipped my mind because I'm an idiot, but you know what I mean. I'm just constantly trying to keep things as quick as I can. Constantly keep moving, uh, heading towards the next zone already. And uh, yeah, things are going pretty well as it stands. I mean, we've been we've been going pretty fast through, uh, through the starting zone. And I hope to be level 10 within short order and we can choose our first spec 